I want to talk about food contaminants before we finish here. Thank you for being very patient with my comprehensive lecture here today. Which food contaminants increase the destruction of dopamine producing neurons? Don't you want to know this so you can protect your neurons? Whether or not you have Parkinson's disease. I don't think any of us want to progress to a problem with our brains. What are the mechanisms? These contaminants can speed up the progression of Parkinson's disease. So let's avoid them. Have you heard of beta methyl, uh, methyl amino L alanine? I'll say that again, beta methyl amino alanine. It's made by cyanobacteria in seawater and may be concentrated in crab, shrimp, fish, or shellfish. Brains from Parkinson's disease patients had high levels of this damaging BMAA, even when compared to Alzheimer's disease and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. By the way, with ALS, they found that in Guam, where people ate a lot of this BMAA, that it directly produced neurotoxic actions and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It can damage and kill dopamine producing cells and increase Lewy bodies, very damaging has a structural similarity to glutamate, the main neuro excitatory transmitter in the brain. So it can trigger excited toxicity, killing brain cells, can damage energy production in mitochondria, also killing brain cells, such as the dopamine producing ones. And it can increase protein misfolding in Lewy bodies. Can largely avoid this by avoiding crabs, shrimp, fish, or shellfish where it's bioaccumulated. Now, harmane is another contaminant of food, usually in fermented foods. This graph shows that the Parkinson's patients with the lowest amount of harmane had more harmane than the highest amount of harmane in people without Parkinson's disease. This by itself is rather telling, okay? People with Parkinson's disease have higher harmane levels. Harmane increases tumor, tremors. And when harmane increases tremors, this is true in essential tremor, which is a problem with millions of Americans and around the world, but also with the tremors in Parkinson's disease. Now it's found in some of the favorite things that Americans like, beer. <laughs> 12 fluid ounces has the highest level of total harmane and norharmane. 20 cigarettes, the second highest level. Pork loin, broiled beef, cheese, bacon, and broiled chicken, a favorite in fast food restaurants. All of these are very high in the tremor producing harmane and norharmane. How could you possibly avoid tremors? Well, you could avoid these foods and cigarettes and beer. I certainly do. Home use of pesticides can increase the risk of Parkinson's disease. And you can use a uh, non-toxic alternative such as boric acid for cockroaches and many other insects, which is non-toxic. Cinnamon, uh, dimitaceous earth for fleas. Uh, cinnamon helps with ants, uh, either the spray or the powder. Uh, there are many non-toxic ways to do this. And occupational exposure can increase risk of Parkinson's disease four times, 400% increase. Even home use can increase it quite a bit too. Postmortem studies on Parkinson's patients find higher levels of the organochlorine pesticides. Again, these aren't used hardly at all anymore, but they're in the environment. So they're bioaccumulated into animal fat. And you need to avoid animal fat entirely to avoid these. More animal fat increased odds in this study in the Annals of Neurology over five times, it, you're eating animal fat at your own risk. And of course, animal fat is also associated with many other chronic diseases, this is obvious. But five times the odds risk of Parkinson's disease, I say avoid them. Now they looked at lindane, which is one of the organochlorine pesticides. These are bioaccumulated in animal fat and then bioaccumulate again in brain fat in people. In Parkinson's disease, lindane was higher even than Alzheimer's disease and much higher than controls. Raised the risk of getting Parkinson's disease 4.39 times over normal risk. Typical sources, milk, eggs, and cheese. So I guess you're looking at an omelet here. Uh, 
There are many alternatives to omelets. My wife's cookbook has some just delicious breakfast alternatives. And I highly recommend that you find something else to eat that is not contaminated with lindane, which also has been linked very strongly to cancer. You could eat organic. Uh, organic foods are now are much more available and cheaper. Uh, exposure to pesticides at increased risk. What, this study looked at 46 studies and the risk was higher of Parkinson's in all of the studies. Four times, in some cases, even five times the risk where people are getting exposed to a lot of pesticides. Now I wanna talk about polychlorinated biphenol, commonly known as PCBs. They're higher in the brains in Parkinson's disease. They can be avoided too, if you know where they are. They accumulate in the brain and disrupt dopamine. They damage cognitive function. But one of the big problems they have is they damage this tyrosine hydroxylase. And the aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, this is the enzyme that makes dopamine from levodopa. So it damages both of these. PCBs damage the brain, no doubt. And they're found in animal fat. I'll show you where they're found in a couple slides. Now in 1977, they banned the PCBs. Unfortunately, they're still in the environment. They don't break down. And then they produce polybrominated diphenyl ethers. Well, these PBDEs are just as bad or worse than the ones they replaced. The damage to dopaminergic neurons is strikingly similar to PCBs. And they were found to impair motor function. But let's avoid these things. Where are they found? Fish oil, number one. Fish, number two. Eggs, dairy, and baby food and beef also contain these. They're bioaccumulated fat-loving compounds that get stronger in the environment. So unfortunately, uh, even vegetable oil had a tiny amount of PCBs, but fruits, vegetables, and cereals virtually absent because there's no bioaccumulation in these plant foods. That's one reason why plant foods are safer. They don't bioaccumulate fat-loving toxins. Now, some people say, well, I eat organic chicken or I eat organic beef, so I don't get any pesticides. Wrong. Even organic meat has polychlorinated biphenyls and organochlorine pesticides. This study in food and chemical toxicology in 2017 showed clearly that not only did organic chicken have as much, but more of these organochlorine pesticides and beef had more, not less of these organochlorine pesticides. So the solution is not to eat organic beef or chicken, it's not to eat beef or chicken. Now, I just will mention mercury. I think everyone knows that mercury is a neurotoxin and it's found in fish. It increases oxidative stress, damages the mitochondria and lowers dopamine production. Another good reason not to eat fish. I'm gonna talk about antioxidants briefly here because we're coming near the end of the talk. But I do want to mention that people with Parkinson's need more antioxidants because they can increase the oxidation products from excess tremors and movement tightness and neuroinflammation can increase oxidation. So you're going to need more antioxidant because this oxidative stress can damage the dopamine producing brain cells, as I mentioned. Selenium protects dopamine producing cells. The breakdown of dopamine can lead to hydrogen peroxide and glutathione peroxidase converts hydrogen peroxide into water. It's great, but it can't do it without dietary selenium, which is why I add selenium in a perfect form to the brain and body food. Antioxidants in food, carotenoids, I've mentioned, vitamin C, vitamin E, Polyphenols, again, only in plant foods. Carotenoids and polyphenols are only found in whole plant foods. And then our own antioxidant enzymes need zinc, copper, manganese, and selenium. Coenzyme Q10 is something that we make in our bodies and some people take. And we did use it in our Hawaii dementia prevention trial to boost antioxidant activity to protect brain cells. Antioxidants in diets, well, the Atkins was the worst for vitamin E and vitamin C. The standard American diet was very bad for vitamin C and vitamin E. I didn't even make half. Uh, many of the diets are low in vitamin E. Uh, the only two that were high were vegan whole food and raw vegan diets. For vitamin C, many of the diets were okay. 
But again, the vegan whole food diet and the raw vegan diets were the winners for antioxidants. They studied people with um, Parkinson's disease and they looked at when they got a little bit more antioxidants, uh, beta carotene, lowered risk 14%, they gave them six to eight milligrams a day of vitamin E. This is a tiny amount and it's still lowered risk 13%. And they gave them a little bit of vitamin C and it's still lowered risk 9%. Imagine, imagine what you could do with a real multiple with reasonable amounts of these things. So the antioxidants had a protective effect against Parkinson's disease in the Swedish study. Vitamin E in the study, they used a lot of vitamin E and they wisely use it with vitamin C, very important, they work together. Delayed the progression of Parkinson's disease two and a half years. Um, tremendous um, study in molecular aspects of medicine. Vitamin E and beta carotene were found to reduce the risk. Vitamin E, 55% less risk, beta carotene, 44%. But here's another statistic. 93% of Americans don't get the bare minimum of vitamin E. This may be linked to the epidemic of Parkinson's disease that's going on right now. It's the fastest growing neurologic disorder. Vitamin B6 may be low because the medication actually can reduce the vitamin B6 in the body. So another thing, that should be in your multivitamin in the correct form and quantity. Vitamin B6 needs to be limited to get only the right amount, not too much. Lower vitamin D levels have been correlated with Parkinson's disease and with worse tremors. So vitamin D supplementation has been found to help. And I think that vitamin D supplementation with vitamin D3, the normal natural form is uh, probably a good idea for most people who don't get a lot of sun. There was even a study here in Hawaii on skateboarding kids who got tons of sun and vitamin D still helped them. I mentioned coenzyme Q10. This is an antioxidant. It can be taken by pill form. It's normally made in our bodies. It's a very powerful antioxidant. I'm going to sum up here. Food for Parkinson's disease. Eat plenty of berries, grapes, and other fruits to get protective antioxidants and polyphenols and flavonoids. Increase bell peppers, organic, and organic kale and cabbage. Kale and cabbage have indole 3-carbonyl and sulforaphane. These are powerfully protective. Increase sesame tahini and organic soy products to protect your ability to make your own levodopa, to add to the levodopa you may also be taking. Stay away from animal fats and animal protein. Uh, a friend of mine told me that they had cut down on the animal fats and animal proteins. They, they, they had their kids eat less of them. I was so shocked. I compared it to, oh, my kids are drinking gasoline and now they're drinking less gasoline. I have to say, these are very damaging foods and the research is very concluding, conclusive. Um, buy organic foods to avoid pesticides. Here's my wife's book, Parkinson's Disease Cookbook, highly recommended. And you can find that at my website, drsteveblake.com. Antioxidants are crucial. Make sure you get vitamin C, real vitamin E. I have to caution you that the vitamin E in supplements is almost universally a damaging synthetic alternative, which is not real vitamin E. Get enough selenium, copper, zinc, and manganese. All of these are found in my brain and body food available at drsteveblake.com. Uh, dietary protocol for Parkinson's disease. Remember, if you reduce the protein to necessary levels from the common excessive levels, you may see an immediate reduction in tremors and rigidity. You may even need to talk to your neurologist about reducing your levodopa intake because you won't need as much anymore. Avoid the dietary toxins in animal fat, which means not eating animal products. Increase dietary antioxidants from plants. So the more whole plant foods, the better. In include bell peppers to retain dopamine uh, and reduce Lewy body formation. Possibly think about turmeric, coenzyme Q10 and skull cap. I have to say that there's much more that I could tell you about Parkinson's disease. Please uh, check out my book, Parkinson's disease, dietary regulation of dopamine on my website, drsteveblake.com and my wife's cookbook and the brain and body food. If you have questions, you can email me, steve at drsteveblake.com. If I haven't covered them in this talk and in the book, then I'd be happy to help you in that way. 
And with this, I'm gonna say I'm concluding my talk. Thank you very much for being here today.